Wednesday morning to you. This Coffee Break Reflection, I'm Pastor Jerry Scott. Thank you for giving me a few moments this Wednesday, the 20th of January, to talk to you. Since I was born in 1955, these United States have been led by 12 presidents. Let's see if I can get them named here. Dwight D. Eisenhower, John F. Kennedy, Lyndon B. Johnson, Richard Nixon, Gerald R. Ford, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, George H. W. Bush, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, Barack Obama, and Donald J. Trump. <laughs> yeah, did I write right? Well, I wrote it down, obviously. Looking over that list, I see some heroes and, well, hmm, yeah, and some not so great guys either. But each one was my president. And at noon today, these United States will have a new president when Joseph R. Biden Jr. is sworn into office. Some will celebrate, optimistic about days ahead, and others will mourn knowing that policies will change, policies they don't agree with. Christian, whatever your political leaning, ours is a shared responsibility to pray for those who govern and to pray for our president, Joe Biden. Will you? Our prayers are informed by a couple of scriptural truths. The first is underlines this basic fact that government is God's plan. When we pray for those who govern, we join God in godly work. Yeah, the passage I'm about to read can be a little hard for us to accept, but it teaches us that God's hand is at work in human government. Listen to what Paul writes under the inspiration of the Spirit. Everyone must submit to governing authorities, for all authority comes from God, and those in positions of authority are placed there by God. So anyone who re rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and they will be punished. These are God's servants sent for the purpose of punishing those who do wrong. So submit to them, not only to avoid punishment, but also to keep a clear conscience. Pay your taxes for the same reasons, for government workers have to be paid. They are serving God in what they do. Excerpts from Romans 13. Challenging truth? Sure is. Yes, the Lord has given us freedom in this nation to choose our leaders, but he is the ultimate source of authority, and we recognize that. And we honor him when we choose wisely, and then when we actively seek him on behalf of those who hold office, whether it's our local council or our national president. So let us pray. Second, even more explicitly, the Bible teaches us that Christians are to pray for their leaders. No ifs, ands, buts, or exceptions. Paul again writes, pray for all people, and as you make your request, please God's, plead for God's mercy upon them and give thanks. Pray this way. What way? Asking God's mercy and giving thanks for kings and all others in authority so that you may live in peace and quietness in godliness and dignity. This is good and pleases God our Savior. He wrote those words to Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 2. Please note, he didn't say pray for leaders with whom you agree. He didn't say pray for noble leaders. He didn't even pray, tell us to pray for good leaders. He says pray for all leaders. Imagine how challenging that was for that first generations of Christians, knowing that they were praying for an emperor who was a pagan, who claimed to be a god himself, and who persecuted them. And yet, they were commanded, and we are commanded, to pray for government. As our new government takes office in Washington today, we do our part in helping to make this a just and free society by faithfully praying. I urge you, write down the name of our president, your congressperson, your senator, your governor, your local representatives. Put them on your prayer list and do what God asks us as Christians to do. Lift them up before him on your bended knee in prayer. We are citizens of two realms, Christian. We know this. We are first citizens of heaven's realm, Christ our King but we are also loyal citizens of our nation. Negotiating the 
dual claims in our life can require a lot of wisdom, requires a deep humility, and requires the wisdom and guidance of the Holy Spirit, and he will give it to us. I want to close today with words of Jesus, and he talks about those competing claims of allegiance. It's a moment of truth, and I pray it will touch your heart. In Matthew's Gospel, we read some people came to Jesus and said, Teacher, we know how honest you are. You teach about God's ways regardless of consequences. You are impartial. You don't play favorites. Now tell us what you think about this. Is it right to pay taxes to the Roman government or not? Jesus knew their evil motives. You hypocrites, he said. Who are you trying to fool with your trick question? Here, show me a Roman coin used for the tax. They handed him the coin and he asked, Whose picture and title are stamped on this coin? Caesar's, they replied. Well, then he said, Give to Caesar what belongs to him. But everything that belongs to God must be given to God. And his reply amazed them and they went away. Our friend, may we be wise, good, loyal citizens who give to our president and our leaders what belongs to them and who give our first allegiance and our hearts to God who will love us for eternity. Would you join me in prayer this morning? Father in heaven, increase my faith that I will live in obedience to your call. I lift America's leaders, particularly our new president, Joseph Biden, before you. I pray this morning that as he assumes office today, you will gra grace him with virtues of wisdom and justice and courage and humility and faith and hope and love. Work deeply in his heart and mind. Draw him to a new understanding of who you are. And I pray, Spirit of God, that you would call us your people to find our unique place in this world. Help us, Lord, to be bright lights of hope, fearlessly committed to living the truth, selflessly giving ourselves to serve God and others. People who pray for your kingdom to come, your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. All this I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, friends. God bless you. God be with you today. Appreciate your time. Lord willing, I'll see you back here tomorrow. Until then, walk with Jesus.